Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. But before that, let me inform you the live courses for RBI SEBI and NABARD have been launched for 2023. So if you want to check them out, you can do so on our application as well as on our website. Do check the courses because they are very useful for all of you. Okay, so here we are at the first question of the day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has inaugurated the Mahakal Lok Corridor at Mahakaleshwar Temple in Ujjain, Madhya Pradesh. It is one of the largest corridors in the country. It will be developed in the surroundings of the Dash Lake. So here guys, Rudra Sagar Lake is the right answer. Now the very first thing that you should keep in your mind is that Rudra Sagar Lake is also located in Tripura. Okay, so the, there is a lake in Tripura as well as in Madhya Pradesh. Both of these lakes are named as the Rudra Sagar Lake. So that is the very important fact that you should keep in your mind. Now coming back to this news, what has happened recently? So the Prime Minister has inaugurated the Mahakal Lok Corridor, which is the part of the Mahakaleshwar Temple Corridor Development Project. And this project is worth 850 crore rupees. Okay, so this is a huge amount that has been spent on developing the corridor in the vicinity of this temple. Now, why has the government developed it? The basic reason is basically to beautify the temple more and at the same time increase the tourism in the city of Ujjain. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Nothing much is there. Now, remember that it is going to be the largest corridor, one of the largest corridors. It will be of 900 meters length. Okay, and it is spread around the old Dudra Sagar Lake and it will have 108 stumps. That is the pillar which depicts the Anand Tandav Swarup of Lord Shiva. Obviously, these many informations are not useful for you if you are Argya, Nabad and Sebi student. So, this information is not at all for you. But in case if you are preparing for SSC or uh, NTPC or RRB, if you are preparing for any of these examinations, then this fact can be asked. Okay. So, you can remember that as well that there are 108 stumps in this low lok corridor which will be depicting the anand tandav swarup of mahakal question number two is union cabinet has approved prime minister's development initiative for northeast region scheme for the remaining four years of the 15th finance commission from 2022 to 23 to fy 26 it will be implemented by the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region with a budgetary outlay of Rs. 6,600 crore. How much is the center's share in the total expenditure of the scheme for the Northeast states? So, obviously, this scheme is for the Northeast states. Now, the uh, it is, guys, a central sector scheme, which means that the entire funding, the entire expenditure will be borne by the central government. So, 100% share will be of the central government as far as the expenditures are concerned. Now, what is this scheme? Guys, this scheme, PM Divine was uh, announced in the union budget and now it has been launched. Okay, so it has been launched for this tenure and it is going to be a central sector scheme and the basic purpose of this scheme is to develop the infrastructure in the northeastern region. So that is the basic idea. Now here we have four specified objectives of this scheme. So let's focus on them. First is that fund infrastructure convergently in the spirit of PM Gati Shakti. So in the spirit of PM Gati Shakti or you can say ki PM Gati Shakti ko dhyan mein rakkar ya uske andar hi uh, infrastructure ko fund kiya jayega. Now, understand this point. The scheme has not said that the PM Gati Shakti scheme and the PM Divine scheme have been merged. Because agar aisa hota to hume PM Divine scheme ki zorati nahi padti. What is the need of launching another scheme? The government could have developed the entire infrastructure in the northeastern region under the name of the Gati Shakti plan as well. Then why did the government need to create another scheme? Isiliya mein keh rahi ki PM Divine is not subsumed under the Gati Shakti. It is just in the spirit of Gati Shakti because the motto of Gati Shakti scheme is to develop the infrastructure across the nation okay so it is in the uh, uh, spirit of that and fund if the funds of the infrastructure okay so 
you may know this fact that gati shakti is working in convergence with various ministries okay so telecom ministry water ministry every kind of ministry that could play a role in the development of infrastructure the, all those ministries are converged under the gati shakti pro program so that would also be considered in this pm divine scheme so the pm divine scheme is go going to use the resources of the gati shakti as well okay i hope this point is clear okay just remember that this scheme is not a part of the gati shakti as of now the government has not clarified on that if tomorrow there is a news in pib and the government says that the pm divine is a part of the gati shakti then we have no other option but to remember that but as of now uh, consider both of these schemes as the separate schemes okay the point two is it supports social development projects based on the felt needs of the northeastern region very easy point it enables livelihood activities for the youth and women so obviously infrastructure will be created in the process of the infrastructure the women and youth would be employed and after the creation of the infrastructure it is going to benefit all the people in the northeast region and help them create livelihood opportunities then the uh, the scheme also aims to fill the development gap, gaps in various sectors so these are the four broad uh, objectives of the pm divine scheme it will be implemented by the ministry of development of northeastern region the budget is 6600 crores all these factors or the facts are very very important guys do remember now we are talking about the ministry of northeastern region the development of northeastern region so i have carved out four flagship schemes of this ministry so let's discuss them a little bit okay main yahan pe sirf overview dungi aapki aapko in charo schemes ka because agar मैं ये चारों स्कीम्स यही कवर करूंगी फिर तो हम आगे के क्वेश्चंस कवर ही नहीं कर पाएंगे बिकॉज दे आर अ लिटिल बिट एक्सटेंसिव हाईवर दे आर नॉट टू मच लेंदी एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स स्कीम्स बट एट द सेम टाइम वी डू नॉट हैव दैट मच टाइम इन आर हैंड टू डिस्कस ऑल सच स्कीम्स इन डिटेल इन दिस वन सेशन हाईवर ऑल दीज स्कीम्स आर प्रोवाइडेड इन द गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स डॉक्यूमेंट एंड योर मनीष सर has covered these schemes in the वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज वेल सो यू कैन सर्च दैट आउट इन द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ आवर्स as far as the schemes are concerned so i'm going to give you a glimpse of it so first scheme is non lapsable uh, central pool of resources which was launched in 1998 okay so i have just put the schemes in the order of their establishment so the very first scheme that was established is this fund okay so it is the non lapsable central pool of resources 1998 and what is the purpose of it it is to develop the infrastructure of the northeast region then uh, came the northeast rural uh, rural livelihood project now it is a project so it is developed or you can say it is being implemented with the help of the world bank okay so that is another important point regarding this scheme that you all should remember and it was launched in the year 2013 for a period of 5 years okay so right now there is no update regarding the uh, winding up of this project however as far as the scheme is concerned from the exam perspective you just need to remember the facts so the first fact is the establishment year 2013 second fact is the world bank with which this project is being implemented and third fact is the five year tenure for which this project was not there is one more fact which i am not telling you because that is your homework you are going to tell me in how many states of the northeast region uh, was this project launched because this project is not at all for all the states it has been launched in certain number of states so you are going to tell me the name of those states in which this project was launched the third scheme is northeast special infrastructure development scheme which was launched in 2017 uh, for a period of 2017 to 18 to 2019 to 20 so you can say broadly that this scheme was launched from 2017 to 2020 and again the emphasis on creation of the special infrastructure development okay now what kind of special infrastructure it is basically the public utilities water infrastructure health care infrastructure sanitation infrastructure every kind of infrastructure was developed under this scheme okay then we have atmanirbhar hastashilp kar scheme so atmanirbhar sunke to aapko lagi raha hoga ki bahut recent scheme hai and it is a recent scheme it is uh, it was launched in 2021 and atmanirbhar is self reliance hastashilp kar is the one who crafts okay by using his or her hands okay so hast shilpkar hast is hand and shilpkar is the crafting so this scheme aims to help the 
handicraft workers in the northeastern region by providing them the financial aid so that they can set up their own venture or they can find good uh, employment opportunity in this field only okay so that's the basic idea of this scheme i hope you have liked the fact that i have told you about these schemes and these are the you can say the uh, oeuvre of the ministry of development of northeastern region it is the complete uh, you can say list of the schemes which this ministry is launching or implementing the third question is the tamil nadu government notified the kadavur slender loris sanctuary covering 11806 hectares in karur and dindigul district the international union for conservation of nature red list has categorized slender loris as an endangered animal under which schedule of the world life sorry wildlife protection act of india 1972 are the endangered animals given protection so this is i guess a difficult question it must have give you the chills down the spine spine but you need to prepare yourself for such type of question because here the very detail of the question has been asked the schedule where under which the endangered animals are given protection under the wildlife protection act has been asked from you so my motive behind creating such a question is to tell you that the devil is in the details so pay attention to the details right now as far as the answer of this question is concerned so schedule first is the right answer okay so sabse pehle hum animals ko priority denge is tarike se aap yaad rakh sakte hain ki first schedule mein the very first thing that the act has talked about is to list the endangered animals and provide them protection okay so under this schedule first of this act uh, the hunting of these animals uh, is prohibited and they are given protection by the government okay so that's the basic idea of the schedule first however you don't need to go into too much of its depth you just need to know the overview of the schedule first okay that much is suffice now coming to the news tamil nadu government has notified the first ever sanctuary uh, for this animal okay so this is slender loris bandar ke chacha lag rahe hain lekin theek hai to ye hai slender loris मिस्टर स्टैंडल ऑलिस जिनके लिए सेंचुरी बनाई है तमिलनाडु गवर्नमेंट ने ओके एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेंचुरी फॉर दिस एनिमल ओके एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस यू डोंट नीड टू रिमेंबर द एरिया अक्रॉस व्हिच इट इज स्प्रेड इट इज नॉट एट ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट द डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स यू कैन रिमेंबर ओके बिकॉज़ वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज एंड योर थर्मल पावर प्रोजेक्ट्स पावर प्लांट्स एंड ऑल सच a uh, type of static gk is relevant for your examination and minute details are also asked so minute detail is this only because this is in the current affairs as well so remember karur district and dindigul district uh, are the places where this sanctuary is located so karur district mein aapka karur vyasa bank bhi hai okay so remember that as well now on that note tell me the tagline of karur vyasa bank in the comment section below moving ahead International Union for the Conservation of Nature Red List has categorized slender loris as an endangered animal and the schedule first of wildlife protection act of 1972 has also categorized this animal as the endangered animal so protection uh, is provided to this animal okay so this much is the news now we are at the IUCN International Union for the Conservation of Nature this organization in itself is very important so i'm going to talk a little bit about it and then i will move ahead to the question number 4 first of all guys iucn's headquarters is in switzerland gland switzerland gland is g l a n d gland okay gland is the city in switzerland where the iucn's headquarters is located now here you can see nature 2030 so guys this is the strategy which iucn has adopted for uh, you can say strengthening the conservation of nature okay and the timeline you can clearly see is 2030 to uh, uh, to fulfill the objectives of this strategy okay so let's discuss a little bit about this strategy again we do not have to go into too much of its depth theek hai coverage zyada karni hai depth bhi honi chahiye but itna bhi nahi ki aap har ek news ke bilkul hi depth mein ghus jao utni zarurat nahi hai so let's discuss this news the very first thing which this strategy talks about is 
दी बायोस्फीयर द हेल्दी बायोस्फीयर अगर बायोस्फीयर अच्छा होगा द बायोस्फीयर इज द बेस इफ द बायोस्फीयर इज स्ट्रेंद एंड इट इज कंजर्व एंड इट इज यूज सस्टेनेबली देन ऑब्वियसली द सोसाइटी विल फ्लरिश एंड हियर यू कैन सी द एस डी जीज विच विल बी फुलफिल्ड इफ द बायोस्फीयर इज स्ट्रेंद नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू जूम इट आउट फॉर यू ओके द पिक्चर इट सेल्फ इज अटल ब्लर बट द पिक्चर आई हैव टेकन फ्रॉम द पी डी एफ इट सेल्फ इन द पी डी एफ ऑल्सो द पिक्चर वॉज ब्लर ओके सो हियर यू कैन सी द नो पॉवर्टी गोल इज देर इफ द बायोस्फीयर इज स्ट्रेंथ सो इन इक्वलिटी विल बी रिड्यूस्ड बिकॉज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द नेचर इज कंसर्न सो ऑल द पीपल हु आर वेरी क्लोज टू द नेचर द एग्रीकल्चरलिस्ट द फार्मर्स एंड द पीपल हु रिजाइड इन द फॉरेस्ट दे ऑल्सो गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू पार्टिसिपेट इन द इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी एंड गेट बेनिफिट फ्रॉम दैट okay so there are various kinds of sdgs which will be uh, you can say fulfilled if the biosphere and the bioeconomy is uh, maintained okay apart from this you don't have to go into its depth again don't try to remember all such sdgs because directly a question would not be asked from this strategy however you can use the pointers which i am telling you in this strategy in your descriptive answer of esi or agriculture if you encounter any question related to environment okay now coming to economy if the biosphere is protected or conserved okay so economy uh, economic boost will also be there because then the economy and ecology would not be at the logger heads they would go hand in hand okay at the present time what we see the economy and the ecology we have to choose one of these but if we focus eco uh, we focus on the biosphere then this choice will be eliminated because then we can take both of them hand in hand and uh, move towards growth okay uh, i will give you an example of it uh just wait a little bit first let's look at this so sdg 17 which talks about the collaboration with uh, all the entities okay the uh, collaborative efforts to achieve the sustainable development goal will also be achieved okay now as far as the economy and ecology is concerned how will strengthening biosphere lead to economic growth let's take an example of it okay there was a question in upsc as well uh forest as the case studies of economic excellence that was the essay topic in your uh, upsc examination as well so i'm just going to take an example from there only okay so guys in the economy what do we have production consumption and disposal these are the three main economic activities and they run in the circular motion right at present it is not being run in the circular motion because we do production we consume the product and then we create the uh you can say waste okay we dispose the product we create that waste and that waste is not leading to production again but if we focus on strengthening the bio economy then what will happen production consumption and disposal all these three elements will get interconnected we will produce goods theek hai by using these sustainable agricultural goods or sustainable goods economic uh, sorry ecological goods environmental goods we will use whatever good is there that is being produced from the nature and that is not at all at the cost of nature we are consuming the good and then we are disposing that good as well but from the disposed waste we are again creating the good again okay we are creating the recycled good so again it will enter into the cycle production consumption and disposal so here circular bio economy has been achieved okay so i hope this much is clear that was the basic idea behind it and i hope the points those which i have mentioned would help you anywhere in your exam preparation okay the next point or you can say this is the strategy this is the framework which iucn has adopted so here we have five r's recognize retain restore resource reconnect now here it is entirely in connection with the nature conservation so recognize the need of uh, the natural resources and their importance retain uh, make efforts to retain the existing resources then restore the already damaged resources then uh, use the resources optimally then reconnect okay reconnect as in uh connect with the people or you can say make the people environment connection better so that we can grow sustainably so that's the basic idea and here guys i don't think that it needs to be discussed it is just the plan it's just the vision of iucn how will it create to uh, how will it uh, achieve the sustainable development how will it 
conserve the nature and in accordance with that it has created this strategy in my opinion this is not at all important still i have put it in the ppt if you want to read more about it you can just study the graph it is very easy to understand there is nothing much there okay the question number four is which of the following companies is not a partner of nascom in its responsible ai hub and resource kit initiative so here guys uh, adobe is the right answer adobe is not a partner of nascom in this responsible ai hub initiative what is responsible ai hub initiative it basically aims to uh, provide guidelines to the stakeholders so that they use the ai artificial intelligence responsibly okay because artificial intelligence is a technology which can act as a constructive as well as a destructive force so we need to put it into the constructive element we cannot use it for destruction okay right so in order to provide guidelines to the entities who are developing ai products and who are into this field the responsible ai hub initiative has been launched by nascom so here one more addition has happened that a resource kit has also been launched i will talk about the resource kit as well but first look at the partners of nascom in this initiative so first we have tactile analytics microsoft deloitte Tata Consultancy Services and IBM Research. So these are your five companies which are partnering with NASCOM in this responsible AI initiative. So you can understand this point or you can remember it as NASCOM has five fingers for implementing AI. First finger is Fractal Analytics. Then we have Microsoft, Deloitte, TCS and IBM. Okay, these are the five fingers of NASCOM in developing AI. और बिना हाथ के तो AI डेवलप नहीं किया जा सकता ओके सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिमेम्बर इन दिस मैनर यू कैन यूज दिस ट्रिक एज वेल नाउ द रिसोर्स किट विच हैज बिन रिसेंटली लॉन्च सो इट इट इंक्लूड्स सेक्टर एग्नोस्टिक टूल्स एंड गाइडेंस टू इनेबल द बिजनेस टू लेवरेज ए आई बाई प्रायोरिटाइजिंग यूजर ट्रस्ट एंड सेफ्टी सो इट इज बेसिकली अगेन द टूल्स किट है तो इसमें ऑब्वियसली टूल्स होंगे टूल्स लाइक द सॉफ्टवेयर और द गाइडलाइंस विच कैन हेल्प द बिजनेस इन लेवरेजिंग ए आई बट एट द सेम टाइम कीपिंग इन माइंड द डिस्ट्रक्टिव एलिमेंट ऑफ ए आई एंड कीपिंग इन माइंड द ट्रस्ट फैक्टर्स ऑफ द कंज्यूमर्स सो दैट द देयर ट्रस्ट कैन ऑल्सो get can also not get breached okay now hum nascom ke bare mein pad rahe hain so there is one more news related to nascom and that is the cloud summit which nascom is going to organize in november so there is the theme cloud tonic scaling growth boosting agility so this is the theme and it will be a virtual summit okay now nascom guys is Stand, uh, nascom stands for national association of software and service companies and it is a non profit organization theek hai it is not a statutory body however it seems to be uh, a statutory body or a government body but it is not so it is a not for profit body and it works for the it industry in india okay in order to provide the backing to the it industry and guidance to the it industry nascom has been established in the year 1988 okay now the current chairperson of nascom is krishnan ramanujam and this is a very important fact so pay attention to it next question is which edition of fikki heel has been organized at the fikki premise in new delhi now guys understand this point first of all whenever any kind of summit is organized by fikki by your cii or by your uh, any such kind of industry body then what are the things that you need to pay attention to first is the addition second is the theme third is the place these are the three factors or facts that you need to uh, pay attention to whenever there is a summit or event organized by the industry bodies because otherwise there are uh, you can say nothing much important in these summits which take place okay chaliye so the 16th edition of this fikki heel was organized and it is basically the annual health conference okay न्यू डेली में हुआ था एंड द थीम इज हेल्थ केयर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ड्राइविंग इंडिया ग्रोथ इंडिया की ग्रोथ तब तक नहीं हो सकती जब तक हेल्थ केयर सेक्टर ट्रांसफॉर्म नहीं होगा बिकॉज ग्रोथ के लिए वी हैव दी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स दैट इज द ह्यूमन रिसोर्स अगर ह्यूमन रिसोर्स को ही अच्छे से डेवलप नहीं कर पाएंगे तो वी कैन नॉट लीड्स टू ग्रोथ बिकॉज इंडिया इज नॉट दैट डेवलप दैट इट कैन इंटायरली रिलाई ऑन द मशीन वी कैन नॉट रिलाई ऑन द मशीन वी हैव द बेस्ट ऑफ द रिसोर्स दैट वी हैव इज द ह्यूमन रिसोर्स तो उसको डेवलप करने के लिए हेल्थ एंड एजुकेशन आर द टू फैक्टर्स विच नीड अटेंशन सो इन दिस मैनर यू कैन रिमेंबर द थीम ऑफ दिस हेल्थ समिट दैट इज हेल्थ केयर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ड्राइविंग इंडिया 
इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ ना मुझे पता है काफी सारी थीम्स हो जाती हैं काफी सारे इवेंट्स होते हैं सो so, इसको याद रखना बहुत डिफिकल्ट होता है सो ऑन दैट नोट और यू कैन वॉट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन क्रिएट अ लिस्ट यू कैन क्रिएट फैक्ट चीट शीट वेर यू आर राइटिंग जस्ट द समिट्स विच हैव टेकन प्लेस इन द लास्ट सिक्स मंथ्स ओके समिट्स देयर प्लेसेस देयर एडिशन एंड देयर थीम्स ओके वेन यू क्रिएट दिस टेबल एंड लुक एट इट अगेन एंड अगेन इफ एनी ऑफ योर एग्जामिनेशन इज कमिंग for the past 6 months then it will help you in memorizing the themes of all such events or otherwise it is very very difficult to remember the themes of so many events that take place every month okay now question number 6 is kwafu is the advanced space based solar observatory of which country so recently it was launched by china okay so it is the first space based solar telescope so this telescope has been launched into the space and it is going to research on sun's atmosphere okay so it is also called as the advanced space based solar observatory and the nickname of it is kwafu 1 okay and it has been launched on the long march 2d carrier rocket and i hope all of you are aware that long march series of rocket is owned, owned by china so this is china's first full scale satellite dedicated to the researching of the sun uh, it is world's first solar telescope capable of simultaneously monitoring both the solar flares and the coronal mass ejection now corona is the outer layer of sun okay so whatever ejections are uh, done in the outer layer and whatever solar flares are uh, emitted by the sun all of these can be studied by this telescope and this is the first such telescope that can study both of them simultaneously okay now india is also planning to lo launch its first solar mission which is known as aditya l1 mission okay so remember that as well gaganyaan b 2023 mein hi we are going to launch the next question is what is india's rank in the commitment to reducing inequality index in 2022 and 2020 respectively so ranking of india has been asked for 2 years in the same index okay so this is how the questions are made difficult for all of you now here option a is the right answer so this year india's rank is 123rd last year was uh, last year it was 129th now the index was released in 2020 only and after that now it has been released so first of all who release, releases this index it is oxfam international and the development finance international these two organizations release the commitment to reducing inequality index and this year we have the three parameters on which the countries were judged first is the public service because if the access to public services is equitable then obviously inequality will be reduced okay which is not the case in india and uh, for that matter it is not the case in anywhere at the world okay inequality exist karti hai har jagah world mein theek hai however it's just the intensity of inequality which matters as of now so public services in health in education and social protection okay so social protection as in social welfare schemes taxation and workers right so all of these are very crucial areas in which the inequality persists and on the basis of these areas Oxfam International and Development Finance Institution, International Institution, they have released this report. One more fact that I want to tell you here is that Oxfam International releases the reports on inequality as well. Okay, India Inequality Report and various such reports on the basis of inequality only. And one of its, uh, in one of its report, Oxfam International only uh, had recommended to increase the taxation. Okay, in order to uh, in india in order to eliminate the inequal status now let's look at the top countries first is norway second is germany top two is important so remember norway and germany are the top two countries as far as the commitment to reduce inequality index is concerned the bottom is uganda okay that much is enough now where does india stand so india stands at 123rd position out of 161 countries okay and india's health spending is 3.64% of the total spending and it is the lowest out of all the brics nations and uh, the neighboring countries of india even pakistan has a higher uh, expenditure percentage uh, in the healthcare sector theek hai so that is something that india needs to work upon 
now guys in this picture only you have been given the risers so the countries which have performed the best is tajikistan maldives bhutan okay so what you can do is tajikistan is the a uh, country which has shown the maximum improvement and then uh, uh, maldives and bhutan so this much is enough for you to remember the next question is who has been appointed as the president of asia pacific adult bureau of certification so here hormud masan is the right answer so hormud masani uh, has been reappointed as the treasurer of the international audit bureau of certification for 2022 to 2024 and he has also been appointed as the president of the asia pacific audit bureau of certification now here i have one question for all of you which is where is the headquarter of this international audit bureau of certification do tell me now masani is the secretary general of audit bureau of circulations india and this organization audit bureau of circulation india was a founding member of the international federation of audit bureau of certification in 1948 so that is an important fact the last question uh, okay the second last question where did the eighth world carom championship take place so it took place in malaysia and uh, rashmi kumari from india and sandeep dive uh, have won the championship Rashmi Kumari has performed very well in this championship because she has won three titles in the same championship okay at various levels so she is uh, Rashmi Kumari and we have Sandeep Dive okay now it's the last question who has become the new world six red snooker champion in Kuala Lumpur uh, Malaysia so here okay the answer is not in the question in the options it is s shri krishna who has won uh, uh, this world six red snooker championship in kuala lumpur malaysia so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the content uh, and explanation so thank you so much for watching the video if you feel any kind of uh, you can say uh, if you have any kind of feedback that you need to give me you can provide it in the comment section below and please mention the answers of the questions which i ask you during the video okay this for your own sake only okay on that note goodbye guys have a good day keep learning